that call to ministry has evolved over a number of years to the point that I've actually spent 60 years in full-time Christian service. I believe the United Methodist Church offers us those opportunities to work in diverse experiences and different cultures with folks that we may not have a lot in common going in as clergy, but what we walk away with is rich experiences mm -hmm. and the opportunity to see God working in our laity's lives in such amazing ways, ways that we could never imagine on our own. These are extraordinary times, but the good news is we are loved by an extraordinary God. It will be that extraordinary love that will carry us through anything we face. Welcome to times like these. In this podcast, you will hear stories of lives changed and experiences shared with the people of the United Methodist Church here in West Ohio and around the world. Today's episode features Verna Gay and Mary Sullivan, a mother and daughter duo discussing life and ministry and the fun they have while living out their call. I was called with my husband, Gary, your father, to be uh, commissioned as a Methodist missionary, and we served in that capacity for nine years. And then upon his death, I served full-time as a director of religious education on the West Coast. And out of that, felt that I was being called to ordained ministry. So that call to ministry has evolved over a number of years and um, to the point that I've actually spent 60 years in full-time Christian service. So who was the one person in that process of call that if you had a finger to point out, you could say, that person really helped me to discern that and clarify it? At um, one church that I served in religious education, there was a retired minister who served on staff. His name was Reverend David McKithen. And he just was very determined that he felt that I had something that the church needed as an ordained pastor. And he really did guide me into that discernment. That was, that was terribly important because I think otherwise I probably would have just continued in religious education and missed a whole part of my life that has just meant an awful lot. What would you say has been one of your greatest challenges as a clergy person during your career? Probably the greatest challenge is to work within that sense of diversity within the church, that there are so many people from different cultures and with with different, sometimes even opposing ideas. And I keep going back to what John Wesley said, think and let think and the value of that, that we can be very different and yet come together and love each other even though we think differently, um, that's been probably the biggest challenge. So when you think back mm -hmm. upon the multiple ways that you've served and you've been both a pastor for local churches, you've been an assistant to district superintendents off and on, what was one of the greatest joys that you experienced in your lifetime career as a, as a United Methodist pastor? There are two I want to speak to. One was baptizing my grandson, and the other was working with mentoring new pastors, young pastors in my district work. And even as a, a local church pastor, I've had that role of mentoring people into pastoral ministry. And that has been just extremely rewarding and fulfilling. So I want to go back in time. When you were a little girl, you attended church, but your family didn't necessarily right. go to church yeah. with you. Right. Reflect on that a little bit about why the church was so important and then follow up with why the United Methodist Church and why you chose to commit your career to that. My family life growing up was very dysfunctional. And I would, with a friend who invited me to Sunday school at the chapel on the military base where we were living, got me involved in that life when I was nine years old. And from that time on, I just went wherever I could walk to church, that's where I went, didn't matter denomination. But when I was a teenager, 
I fell into a Methodist church and the youth group at that Methodist church, and that literally saved my life because my family life was very, very difficult at that point. And if it hadn't been for that youth group, I do not know where I'd be today. Yeah. So what is your hope for the United Methodist Church today? My hope for the United Methodist Church is that we could begin to deliberately and actively live into the best of being followers of Jesus Christ with the kinds of understandings that John Wesley had about who we are as, as diverse people, who we are as tolerant people, who we are as those people whose mind is, first of all, centered in living out the faith that was what came to us from Jesus through Paul and through other church leaders and through Wesley, who mm -hmm. was so dynamic and so holistic and so inclusive. Mary, you've been asking me lots of questions. I think I want to throw this back at you. And, and we had quite a family life with me being involved in the church all the time and being your Sunday school teacher and being your preacher. Was it difficult for you growing up as a pastor's kid? And what was the real challenge about that? The hardest part for me being a pastor's kid, I think, was the inconsistency of where we lived. Mm -hmm because from the time that I was little, we moved quite a bit. I remember the longest place I think we lived when I was a child was five years. And not having the long-term friendships growing up, mm -hmm. I always felt like I was missing out on an experience that other friends were getting to have. On the other hand though, because we moved like we did, I got to meet a lot of different types of people. We lived in Southern California for my childhood, so that meant diversity in the best sense of the word. And then we moved back to rural Ohio, which was a completely different culture mm -hmm. from suburban California. And so that enriched me in my life. And as an adult looking back, I see how wonderful that was for me and serving as, as a United Methodist pastor, that's been one of the greatest gifts I've had. When we were living out in Southern Cal, and this was during my freshman and sophomore year of high school, mm -hmm. you were my youth group minister. Mm -hmm. We called you Sarge, mm -hmm. and it was a large youth group. We had, I think, probably 30 to 40 in junior high and about the same in senior high, if not more. Those were my closest friendships for those two years that we lived there. And like you, I think that the youth group saved my life. It also led me towards a call to be in youth ministry. I ended up doing Camp Otterbein for three summers out of that passion for working with children and youth. And that then helped me to clarify my call into ministry and the direction that I felt God was calling me to at that time. Yeah. So when you think about the United Methodist Church today, what do you most appreciate about the denomination? For me, and <clears throat> keeping in mind that the majority of my career has been in an urban church, one of the beauties that I have found within the United Methodist Church has been the fact that diversity is inclusive within the United Methodist Church, that from John Wesley's time, and all, as we know, he had a heart for people of poverty and mm -hmm. the marginalized. He had a heart for orphans and for women and for those in prison. And to be a part of the Wesleyan roots as an urban pastor who had the opportunity to um, see United Methodism at its best, we were practicing daily to do no harm, to do good, and to stay in love with God, with folks that were struggling and traumatized and physically hungry and even more so spiritually hungry. That's mm -hmm. been a deep blessing for me. I have learned more about what it means to know God's blessing when you don't have two pennies to rub and I have learned what it means to experience God's grace from folks that that is truly what feeds them because they don't have food to put on their table. Mm -hmm. Those are lessons and experiences that I will carry in my heart and my life. And I believe the United Methodist Church 
offers us those opportunities to work in diverse experiences and different cultures with folks that we may not have a lot in common going in as clergy, but what we walk away with is rich experiences mm -hmm. and the opportunity to see God working in our laity's lives in such amazing ways, ways that we could never imagine on our own. As, as I was listening to you talk, Mary, I just had that sense of appreciation for the way your experience has built on my experience as as you grew up, and and that's just a beautiful thing. Well, and back in the day when Lou Buckaloo was assistant to the bishop, I can remember him walking up to me and putting my arm his arm around me, and he would talk about Grandma Tharp, your mom, and would point out and remind me that I am a part of a family of legacy that my grandmother, who he knew, influenced you, that then in turn influenced me. And it made me think that, you know, part of being in the United Methodist Church is that we are family. This we is are. our extended family. We are. And we're connected that way. Yeah. And that we love that way. Yeah. And that that's an important part of the United Methodist Church's legacy is that we remain yes. that way. I believe that there's always been hope in all of the transitions mm -hmm. that our denomination has gone through. And the opportunities for the United Methodist Church in this season and in times like these is that we get to fulfill a part of who we've always tried to be, which is to be inclusive in the midst of diversity. And the hardship of losing congregations and leadership is a grief that we all feel, but we also can look at the United Methodist Church as a denomination that grows from these experiences, that continues to serve its call in the midst of transition and transformation, and that we truly lean upon the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ's example for us, and that we don't waver in these times because we have those deep roots of histories that remind us that God is always good mm -hmm. and that we can lean on that truth even when we are struggling or are having difficulty. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to Times Like These. Episodes are available wherever you listen to podcasts. If this episode has touched and inspired you, please share it with a friend. If you know of someone we should feature on this program, please let us know by emailing us at wocmedia at wocumc.org. We'll see you next time.